In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do um, GitHub OAuth with PHP. Now, this video is um, also coming out in, in Node next week, um, but the purpose of this video is I'm going to show you using a MAMP, um, Mac, Apache, MySQL, and PHP uh, dev environment. I'm going to show you how to kind of set it up and all of that, um, and so that's what I'm going to show you today. Um, so if you look at my screen, I have four links open um, currently. Uh, first one is creating an OAuth app. Second one is authorizing options for OAuth apps. Uh, next one scopes, and the last one speeds. And so each one is, this is the general steps on how to create, um, this is right on the GitHub page, but uh, this is how you uh, register a new OAuth app. And so I'll show you how to do that. Uh, this page is showing you the kind of the web application flow. So first step is to redirect them to the GitHub page um, with a specific uh, parameter which indicates which application you want they're trying to authenticate with. Uh, and then essentially what they're going to do is they're going to redirect you back to your site. Um, in there, uh, you'll um, have a, you'll gain access to their API if it's a successful um, authentication. And then essentially with that, then you'll start being able to make calls using, uh, depending on the scope, and that's where this comes in, this is the scope, so there's a whole bunch of scopes, uh, permissions that you can get here. Um, I might probably go with the, the bare, bare minimum in this video, um, but just evaluate which scope you potentially need, what are you trying to do. Um, I absolutely r recommend uh, not reaching too far. At the same time, you have to realize a lot of people don't pay attention when they're registering. On the other hand, some people pay attention and they might um, get spooked if they're um, if you're asking for all permissions on everything, like that's a lot. And the last page, the last link here, all of them down below. This is the REST API. Um, so if we make a GET request to uh, this URL, uh, it will get um, essentially what will be returned is uh, the the feed that you'd see on your GitHub page. And so that's what we'll do at the end just to verify that our our whole setup has successfully worked. And so let's start on the first link here, creating an OAuth app with uh, GitHub. So what you'll do is go to GitHub slash, uh, that's not me, this one's me. Go to GitHub, top right corner, uh, under settings, scroll down. Okay, sorry, it's where my email is public there. Scroll down to uh, developer settings, um, and then you can create a new OAuth app. Uh, I'm just going to call mine demo. Home page will be actually... Uh, local host, and then you're going to put your port in. Um, that's optional, and then the callback is um, GitHub actually talks about this a little bit here. So we're, we've successfully completed this entire page. I'm going to close it. If you scroll down here, scroll down, nope, it's not on this page, it's on. Uh, might have closed it. But essentially, um, GitHub goes through and explains what a good um, uh, callback URL is and what is not a good callback URL. So, for example, just making it localhost 9000 is not a good callback URL. It should be something relatively unique and descriptive of what's going on. And so, we're going to make ours um, user and we're going to say sign in slash callback. Okay? And so with that, uh, we're going to register our application. I'm going to delete this application before... Uh, yeah, I'm going to delete this application so I can keep these uh, client ID and secret completely public. Um, and so with this, now we're going to begin our uh, OAuth steps. So the first step is user redirected um, to this, this page here. So we're going to have to set up our environment. So I'm using MAMP. We're gonna have to do one thing though. Is um, one important thing we'll have to do is is actually write an HTA access file that um, drops off the .php because if you look at this URL that I gave, um, it's so I'm on port 9000. It's nine. It's it's slash sign in slash callback. And it's not callback.php. You can make it dot .php. Uh, that's one way you could solve that. Um, I'm really jumping around here. Um, but we'll have to write an HD access file to do that. Ah, there we go. For some reason, it, it, it decided to work. Okay. So, <laughs> I can't believe that took me. It actually took me a few minutes to figure it out. Um, so now i got uh, my callback working. Uh, what we're going to do is um, you would hypothetically 
I'm just, I mean, I guess I, I'm going with hypotheticals. If this was a PHP application, I, I guess it is, um, yeah, you, so you somehow check that um, the user's properly signed in, so you use something like uh, um, sessions or uh, like PHP sessions, so let's just, just try that. Um, Session start. Um, I'm not using an ID. Don't follow my example. Um, so session access. I'm gonna give it a little bit more specific a name. Um, so hypothetically, I have my access token here. I'm just gonna because this isn't. I'm not actually making this application to look nice. Um, I'm gonna have my paragraph tag, I'm gonna have code. I'm gonna paste in my access token. And if I refresh, uh, if I go, sorry, if I go back to my um, root, which is I guess user in this case, um, it'll load nothing. I can even get more specific. And I actually recommend setting up like a, a REST API to do all this, but this is just the demo. So I have no access token. I'm not logged in. Um, so since I'm not logged in, logged in I just want to like say logged in or something like that just to prove that logged in. otherwise I want to say um, I'm just gonna put a, a, um, a hashtag or oh, sorry a number sign so I'm gonna make this sign in with github And so it's going to be the option to sign in with GitHub, and that's where we go back to our notes here. It says make a GET request to this URL, and you're going to pass in a few parameters. So parameter one, which I, I believe will all be public. Um, uh, my client ID is found back on this OAuth, OAuth app thing. I guess. As long as you don't put the secret in public, like I am right now with this YouTube video, um, you should be fine. You want the scope in there. Uh, redirect your eyes. You know, I'm going to leave that blank. That's optional. Uh, scope is only a lot, a lot. Uh, it's the only thing that's missing. That's uh, absolutely critical. So you put an and sign in the scope, and then we're going to switch over to scope page to determine what we want. Um, you know, no scope means um, you can read public information. Um, you know, let's just do the public information. So we won't put a scope there. Um, we'll just ping an endpoint that doesn't, cause it, as long as you change the scope means you can ping specific endpoints. And so with that, uh, we're gonna refresh our page and we hit sign in with GitHub. And uh, this is my demo by K Weaver here. I want to say authorized. And as you can see, it um, sends us back to our callback page and we can grab this code. Um, so with that, we jump to our callback page. Do this proper, fix this. Uh, we want to do code and then a get request. And you don't want to to be that you want to do uh, code if code is empty um, I'm just writing this new function here I'm just gonna call this uh, I, I think it's header actually in PHP yeah I think it's header Give 
me the actual dogs. That's what I care about. Yeah. And I want to change this to be local host. 9,000 user. And if there is a code, we want to do the next step in the authorization. So in this case, it'd be um, uh, we want to do uh, the client secret, the code, uh, and then the authorization afterwards. And so what this this is a post request this time and so what we'll do is make a curl post request I don't know these things off the top of my head and this is what we're looking for um, so we have the code I'm just going to put some of these into um, variables so that I can just e more easily type them um, here I'm going to add client ID. Um, this is mine, yours would be different. Take client secret. And then I'm going to make this post request. And so if I switch back to the instructions here, it says here's the URL. I'm going to copy that so I know what it is. So I actually can go like this. Here's the URL. I know it's a post request. Client D, e, client secret. Code. I'm sorry, I'm just jotting down the parameters here. Uh, state is provided if you want. It's an unguessable code. It makes it more secure. And then this final thing is the redirect is where they send you upon completion. Um, it's not required, I'm not going to use it, so I'm just going to actually grab the response from the post request and then um, use that and probably save that into uh, my local session and then redirect them myself back to the home page. So code, let me make sure that's the last thing. Yeah, those are the only required items. And so we're going to take a look at our, our curl request. Um, And our curl request will be uh, we want to receive the server response. We want the output from the server. Uh, this is actually a better demo here. Response, curl request, and the last thing you want to do is close the curl request. So this response here would probably be a string, so we're gonna have to parse it. Um, and that's JSON decode. And when I say string, I meant like a JSON string. And I said I want to change this to be instead post. I'm just trying to contain my curl request, um, and so I'm going to do this post params. Um, I want to declare an array, I guess, and then in that array, my parameters are as follows. Yeah, that's the error notation. Um, client ID. Secret. And that's all I'm looking for. And the last one is code, and code is the variable up top there. And we just have to change the URL. And I'm going to do a var dump of data here, just so I can see what the response is. And so, hypothetically, if I refresh this page now, we got a 500 error. 
I'm just gonna switch over to my nice thing about map is you can just check, check your logs except when you don't ever clear them I guess I'll try it again uh, unexpected string on line 3 oh I want to go write a function but there's no function alright refresh that oh the response is null maybe let's try this and I just want to add some line breaks so that I guess it's, it was null so okay so it looks like it expired or something like that um, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to do one more thing. I'm just looking for a PHP with a, um, a J that handles a JSON response. Um, post fields count URL. I just want to set, set the headers uh, to be uh, JSON. Doesn't matter for now. Uh, let's let's try it this entire call again just to see if we can get an actual response. So we're just gonna head over to not this page. We're gonna head back to our home page, and we're gonna try this sign in with GitHub. Um, and as you can see, it returns something. I just have to figure out how to get my hands on those elements. Um, it's telling me that. Oh, okay. Um, it's telling me that. Uh, the response here is a string. It's not a JSON object. Instead, it's a string that looks like this. I wonder if I could set that. Uh, so my camera recording actually stopped. Um, but what I was saying was, I took a look at the docs here. Um, I noticed that I can use an accept application JSON here with my post request, which gives me this response instead. Um, I went into my code here. I changed. I added a header line, one line here. It said, "Give me the an application JSON versus um, just your basic string." I'm actually going to remove this line here, and that returned the following, where it provided me with the stringified JSON response, and then I moved into a proper PHP element. So now I can actually reference um, this uh, token right now. Uh, I, sh I mean, I'd probably store token type too, but um, I'm not going to. But now I can actually reference it, so I can say, um, so if data at access token um, doesn't equal null, um, therefore we have an access token, I want to start this session and I want to store it uh, in whatever this is. Uh, uh, sorry, data access token. And the last thing I want to do is actually redirect back to the home page because I'm successfully logged in. So this will actually, I have to actually, uh, I guess I could rerun the whole page, but it might throw an error. And if it does throw an error, it would be actually a good thing. So I'm going to reload the page. I got a 500 error, um, which means it's syntax error. So I go back to my PHP error log here at line 36. Line 36 where oh um, this is an object class. Sorry, I, I I don't remember PHP. Just give me a second. I'm gonna look this up. Oh, sorry, I actually know this, how to fix this one. It's like this. I think. No. 
it is like this, okay. And the only other thing I want to do is do a var dump off uh, of the actual uh, data, so if there's an error, I can see what the error is. Um, oh, okay. So yeah, the error description is what I want. If this doesn't work out, so I'm gonna probably comment out um, this line here just so I can refresh this. Um, so that I have a proper error. And with that, I don't actually have anything in my session yet, so the uh, the access doesn't count, so I'm going to hit sign in one last time. I've already approved it, and now it throws a 500 error. Because I just try to do that st same reference. And try one more time. Sign in. And as you can see, it just jumped right to GitHub and back, no problem. And so here's my access token. Typically, you want to actually make this public for the user, but uh, we will because I'm, it will be deleted by the time you watch this video. And uh, so the last thing is uh, actually making API calls. Um, so uh, w if you didn't know the um, the requ request that they said uh, was a bearer response, like a bearer token uh, type, and uh, here, let me just demo one one request, and so let's say uh, here, um, we'll just jump back folder and say API. Uh, let's say uh, user.php, and in here we're going to do a PHP request using their access token. So step one, grab the access token. I'm also going to write this function here. error I'm going to call it, I'm going to pass in a message, and what I want to turn is the following, response and success will be false, response and message is uh, sorry I'm just, I'm just making sure I can handle the error statements, and then I want to return a JSON encode of the response, and so if The access token is empty. Uh, just do an error saying. And now we can actually use that access token. We'll go back to making our curl requests. Um, so uh, instead of making a post request, we'll make it a, a get request, but we'll do it. And so to do that, you just do uh, remove this one here. Uh, you'd still need your URL, and I guess you wouldn't need your post fields because we're not doing a post. Um, we still want to accept an application JSON, uh, and so we'd want the following. Nope, that's not what I'm looking for. Is it GitHub? Sorry, is it api.github.com slash feeds? But since we actually, I, I realized that since um, I can only access public data because we didn't put a scope on it, um, we'll just do their demo one here, which is um, here. This this user uh, token, and then we just pat, um, add on our own uh, access token, a year old re response, and then what we'll do is just um, encode JSON. Data. And with all that, um, typically you could put like an Ajax or call in here to call that like, get request. Um, the reason why we put it in um, a separate file like this is because um, you don't want that, that call to go out if, if they don't have an access token. Um, UI way, uh, in terms of UI, it might be nicer. Anyways, so we'll do that and then. Uh, You know what? I'm not gonna do it. I, I'm just gonna tr do the. I'm just gonna go to the path directly. So, um, still have my uh, my uh, access token. I'm just gonna go API slash. I already forgot what I wrote it as. User. And it returns null. I 
just want to see what the response was. That didn't work. Oh, this is what I actually have to do. So it would be, instead of this path, it would be the following. So these are the important little details. When they, so if you look at the curl request, the dash H means header. Um, so I'm just going to do the following. Create a variable called auth header, and then just so that it's clear what I'm doing, auth header, and then they're looking for this, um, this form. I don't know if they want the capital V to. Uh, uh, this is what I was talking about redirect URLs. To back up what, what's going on here with this error is if you look at this uh, at this URL, it says uh, you need a user agent header. Um, I'm assuming this is just the header for, um, sorry, I'm going to finish typing before I start talking. Uh, I'm assuming this is just the header for uh, the application. So I guess this would be demo. Ah, and there it goes. Okay, so a couple things I changed. I actually swapped these around, so this was the um, auth and token and then the access token, and then I added this user header. And those are the two things I changed, and it shows my logged in um, GitHub user here. And so there's like, um, the, I, there's the exact proof that I'm um, showing the, we've you know set up an OAuth user, we've set up the, um, the access and the callback and all that, and then we also set up the an API call that only uh, an OAuth user can make. And so that's everything um, in this video. Um, if you like this video, please subscribe, please like it. Um, I'm going to be doing this video in Node as well next week.